Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are in the world. This is Howie, and I'm here to help you win with money. Today is December 30th, 2021, nearly the last day of the year, and the market is green, so Santa Claus rally is still going. We're at new all-time highs, so you gotta love that. In today's episode, let's talk about the returns of the market and even real estate and then we'll look at that and we'll see how that impacts the mindset of investors if you are on facebook join me in investing 102 this is a facebook group investing 102 i do post my trades you see this is today i posted a trade already of all the trades that i've done using options this morning the day's not over yet but i I normally do my trades, and then if I have other trades, I will just update it. I even posted what I did with my Riot blockchain. I collected more premium. So catch me on Facebook group, Investing 102. S&P 500 has an incredible run this year. If you look at the year to date, you can see this gain. And to fully appreciate what that means, let's just put some comparison on here. Let's throw in a maybe a Coca-Cola. Well, and we'll mark that as a red so you can see it. Coca-Cola returned you 7% this year. Whoops, let's hit the year to date again. 27% for the S&P 500. So why is this really interesting? So this is another great year. If you look at the two years, the S&P has returned you 48% total in the last two years. In the last five years, 114%, which means you double your money in, in the last five years. Coca-Cola only produced about a 42% gain 10 years. So let's see. Did that work? I'm assuming it worked. And there you go. It's 281% return of your money. So you more than double your money. You triple your money and you're normally, you're close to even quadrupling. But in Coca-Cola, you see that you didn't make a lot of money. So why am I showing this? In the last 10 years or so, most people never lost money in investing. In fact, there was a couple years where you saw double-digit gains. This year, I just showed you, was 27. And then a few years ago, I think last year was 16, and then the year before that was like 29. The problem with these high return rates is you get so used to it that you think the markets will never go down or markets don't produce like a 5% rate of return. So here's a good article. This is about what, what some of the young wealthy investors are doing and what they think the outlook is for 2022. And you can see the key points, right? The market is nearly up 30% this year. We saw that, we're at 27. And you see this line here, it's pretty interesting, right? Markets gain more than normal. What that means is it is possible that in the next 10 years, markets will revert back to a mean. You'll see a little bit less or lower average rate of return because we have seen this long bull market. Now, I'll get into my opinion at the end of this, and we'll just scroll down a little bit, and we'll look at some interesting things, what young investors are doing, especially the wealthy ones. And here are some interesting bullet points. Here it goes. They, they plan to increase their investments in crypto. Now, this is not a bad thing. This is good. In fact, I plan to increase my crypto investing for the next 12 months. And I already produced videos on that topic already. For some, they want to double down on crypto. Now, I don't know what double down means. If you're investing 1%, doubling down means increase it to 2 But if you're investing 20 or 50% of your money, how you double down, right? Do you just up it to 100%? So, depending on what they mean by that, you see this? Half of the millennials say at least half the worth is in crypto. Now, that's a lot. This can end really poorly if crypto goes to zero or even if crypto goes down 90% and just sits there for a decade. So this can be a dangerous thing if a lot of these young investors are putting half their money in crypto. Here's another interesting one. 52% of millennials think the S&P will up by 10 39 think is even more. Now that's fine, right? You're, we're in this bull run for the last 10 years. Most people say, hey, the bull run's not over. It may last another seven or eight years. Sometimes these cycles last about 17 to 18 year periods. So we're only in year 11 or 12. So it's possible that this is true. Millennials think the economy is much stronger. So that's fine. 
So let's get to what the big problem is. You can read this yourself by pausing it, but I'm just going to go to this line over here. You see this? There's a big mistake when everybody thinks markets just keep on going up and that markets do not go flat. The other problem I have is when everybody expects 20% rate of return. Real estate has done really well in the last five years. If you bought real estate, most of you just expect it to always go up. If you ever bought a house in 2006 or 2007, you can see that not only did you lose money in real estate, it took maybe a decade before your house broke even. And that's the same thing with the stock market. Intel was trading at $75 on in the year like 2001, I believe. I think it was like March 2001. Intel was trading at $75 a share. It has never hit that rate today. So let's go into Intel and see what happens. Let's go to this full screen. We'll just scroll back here a little bit and you'll see this Intel right here. I want to zoom in a little bit towards that chart. You see this little peak here, 75 bucks. It's showing uh, August 2000. I thought it was March, but maybe I was wrong. But you see here, prior to this run up of the dot com, Intel has never traded up that high. So you can be sitting on a losing stock for 20 years. And then, yes, recently it's coming back, but it still did not bring you back to this area. So if you bought in this window, you know, between this white bar here, you see this, right? Especially this time right here, you lost money. You've been holding for 20 years. And the problem is, I believe many investors who have been new to the market has never seen holding the bag or what it feels like to not make money. This can be a bigger problem because the first time you lose money and you haven't broke even in five years, eight years, 10 years or longer, you'll see what happens. Most people will just end up selling whatever they had, moving the asset into something else or just staying out of investing altogether. And there's a danger there. There's a danger because it doesn't mean stock market, real estate, or crypto, or whatever it is that goes down. What happened is you lose faith in whatever investment you have. So therefore, one thing I like to do is you got to change your mindset. Sure, the markets have been great the last five years or ten years, depending on which market you're looking at. But you can't just always assume that these things will go up 20% or 30%. For all you Bitcoin investors or Ether we gotten so used to 100% average returns every year. You heard that right. It's about 100% on average. If you hold it for four, five, six, or seven years, on average, you're getting about 100% rate of return. The problem is if you go and measure future return rates using those high expectations, once you get burned, you may, you may actually exit out too early and miss the true run-up. And that's the danger of that type of mindset. So what I want to tell you is this. If you plan your life and investing where you can only require, let's say, an 8 or 9% rate of return, and everything you get above that will surpass your go, then that makes investing a lot easier to bear when markets go in these natural cycles of ups and down. And what I mean by that is, I don't need 8% rate of return to retire nicely. I actually need about a 7% rate of return. Does that mean I only shoot and buy bonds in my portfolio? Absolutely not. Those people who follow me know that I still pick stocks. I still find these things that give me 100 or 200% rate of return in two or three years. I'm still buying the next high growth company that will be around for the next decade. I invest in crypto because I believe I can 5x or 10x my money. So I'm still doing those things, but I don't need something to go up 20, 30 or 40% on average per year. And this is what I'm saying. Because of that, my risk tolerance is much higher. I'm not going to run to the hills when the markets drop 5 or 10 or 20% next week. So, so this is why risk management and having a right mindset of what you need from your investing matters. So with that being said, hey, comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know how your investing journey has been going in the last five years or even 10 years and what do you plan to do at the next time when the markets don't go your way let me know below comment below let's have a discussion around this as always let's do this together let's do this one dollar at a time and have a profitable day bye bye